halfway house Saturday afternoon it is hotter than the devil's hell out here got the old 91 we're basically in the middle of a cornfield this new neighborhood my buddy's got the six liter it's been studded deleted for a long time he's had it a long time and it was done by a reputable shop and he took it to a, another shop and uh yeah, that SS sounds good. Stick shift too. And uh, um, so he's leaking coolant, he's overheating and shit. He took it to a reputable shop and he said right off the bat, they're like, oh, it needs head gaskets. He's like, well, it's already been studded. And they said, well, it needs head gaskets. And I was like, is that all they said? And at this point, I I'd actually never seen this truck. I've known the guy for years and years. But uh, anyway, so I, was like, I said, I'll come look at it. So I come look at it right away. I don't know if you can see too good in there. That heater valve is leaking, and well, back over here. D bag bottle's got a crack in it. So I'm like, okay, well, those are two obvious signs. I mean, uh, I'm not saying it doesn't have blown head gaskets, but I mean, those are two. Like, let's fix that first. So he said he didn't know how they diagged it, or they did any kind of test to see if the gaskets were actually blown. So who knows? I mean, might have got hot, cracked the head, um, got hot, and you know, blew a head gasket. It's a six liter, could've just blown a head gasket anyway. Anyway, got the new D-bag bottle in. Um, a new filter reminder, his was broken off in there. And got the heater valve, about to throw that thing in. Drain a little bit more cooling out and uh, cross our fingers. I do have a diesel head gasket, or a, you know, exhaust. Uh, basically, you stick it in here, it's a little liquid, and it changes colors if it detects um, exhaust gas. So, I didn't bring it with me, because I didn't think it needed it, but, uh, he just moved it from the driveway to here, and it did have some pressure built up. So, hmm, kind of scary. But we'll see. Um, knock this out real quick and let y'all know. Halfway house, 8 a.m. Saturday, 4th of July weekend. Happy New Year. Got this fine automobile. Six liter, 07. 200 something million miles on it. Actually, kind of sounds like this has been a pretty good truck for my buddy. Um, he was a regular at the bar I used to work out, so I've known him for, him and his wife for 15 years, you know, they're good people, and, uh, he always talked about how much he loved his six liter, and his wife's like, man, I tell him to sell that piece of shit, and, uh, he still got it, so, <laughs> uh, we're trying to keep it alive, um, he doesn't want to buy a new truck, and I don't blame him, so, I think I made a video, so, I actually ran into his wife, um, at HEB, and she was like, oh, you doing work on the side, and I'm like, yeah, always, you know, and she said, um, I'm gonna give your number to James, tell him to give you a call. I said, all right. Gives me a call, said, had this thing studded, deleted about five years ago or something. Hasn't had any issues since. Um, he's got a lot of money in this truck, you know. He's had it for years and years. So, said it's been getting hot. He took it to a local shop, reputable shop, and they said it had blown head gaskets. And I'm like, okay, you know, <laughs> probably does. And he said, no, but, you know, the guy who studded it, he said, he swears that, you know, they're bulletproof once you stud them. I was like, man, I've seen them blow head, ga head gaskets, crack heads, um, you know, both with studs, you know, done correctly, everything, you know, it happens. Um, he said, there's no way. And I said, all right, I'll come look at it, you know. So I go out there and look at it. Um, I think I did make a video on this, but uh, just to recap quickly, pop the hood. I can see his heater valve is leaking really bad, and his degas bottle is cracked and leaking under there. I've seen both of those before, so I'm like, okay, did they say anything about these issues? And he said, no. They just said it had blown head gas. He's like, what, what did you do to test it? He said, I don't know. I'm like, okay, that's weird. Um, so I fixed those issues. Don't hear back from him for a week and a half or so. Calls him back. He's like, man, this thing's been running nice and cool. You know, no issues. Um, it's starting to get hot. You know, some, here and there, like randomly, it has temp spikes and all kinds of shit. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm like, okay, I come look at it. So, he said sometimes you can see it leaking, sometimes you can't. And so, it looked like it's coming from this side. He said it definitely wasn't AC condensation. So, I come look, and I, could see, I can't see where it's leaking, but I can see that the frame rail is kind of wet. So, I'm like, okay, make sure my, what I did isn't leaking. You know, it looks good. I'm like, oh, I've seen these hoses leak. I don't know if you can see, but that hose goes around that thickum, and you can see where it's resting on the thickum. So I snaked my hand in there, and sure enough, there's a huge divot in there. Um, but it doesn't feel like it's leaking, but I told him, like, hey, if this isn't leaking, it's going to leak very soon. We need to replace it. He said, cool, go for it. Multiple attempts at Napa to get the right hose, and still haven't got the right hose. So 
In the meantime, he kept driving it and he'd get hot here and there and then started to get real hot. You know, sometimes he wouldn't even make it to work before it got hot. So I'm like, okay. So I brought my scanner the next time. It had a uh, fan clutch code. Um, okay, maybe it needs a fan clutch. And so he's like, well, let's just do a water pump and a fan clutch. And no, take that back. We didn't get there yet. I said, let's do a thermostat. It's cheap and easy. I said, okay, cool. Pick one up. Um, these are actually built into the thermostat housing. Um, I guess I've never done one of these before. At least I don't remember that. Um, I thought that was odd. So anyway, did that. Um, good for another couple days, and then I started doing it again. I said, man, maybe we got a bad thermostat. I said, man, I just put one in my Hemi. It lasts about a day and a half, and then it took a shit. It got stuck closed, so maybe. So we got a new one. Um, put it on there. Damn B. And uh, put another one on there, and it's been good. Or it was good for a couple days, and then same shit. And every time, so he, he lives right by my work, so I'd stop by after work, and every time I looked at it, it was low on coolant. I'm like, dude, you're losing coolant somewhere. Let's let's put the head gasket liquid little tester deal on there and see what it does. Did it. Um, ran it for probably 30, 45 minutes, and it didn't change colors at all. I'm like, wow, that's surprising. I, have, you know, I, was, I was starting to think, dude, for sure it has blown head gasket. It's six liter, but no, it was good. So that checked out okay. And he's like, man, I told you. I'm like, well, we've got to make sure before we go any further, you know, just throwing parts in this thing. So said, fuck it, let's put a, got a fan clutch code, let's put a fan clutch on it, let's put a water pump on it while you're in there. I said, all right, cool. So, get the fan shroud off, which, I don't know if you've ever done them, they're a pain. This one has the inner shroud still on it. I'm debating on putting it back on or not. One of the shops I used to work at, we used to just not put the inner ones back on. Um, it really serves zero purpose, but, uh, whatever. So, get the fan shroud off. Oh, we got a leak there. So... So let's put a radiator in it while we're there. So he's like, man, thank God for savings accounts. I'm like, dude, six liter life, man. So that's an old truck. I mean, sometimes you got to put money into it. You know, you, you neglect maintenance for so many years, and then you know, then you just find issue after issue, and that's what happens. So I got the radiator out of the way. Started cranking on this. These were the tightest little 10 mil bolts I've ever encountered. I bent my gear wrench, uh, ratchet wrench, and I, I snapped a... Or cracked a snap on socket on that guy and eventually it rounded off so i had a craftsman little twist socket set and it's like in between sizes 10 mil is and so i have a mac metric set and this is specifically for 10 mil it fits a lot better so now that i got the radiator out of the way i'm gonna hammer that bad boy on there and we are gonna start rocking and rolling try to get this thing out today hopefully um I work on boats for a living, so it's 4th of July weekend, so I was at work till 9.30 last night, so I didn't have time to work on it. Also, now I forgot to order my radiator, so I had to go to O'Reilly. Um, that really pissed me off. But anyway, I guess I'll try to tape this shit back up for him. Alright, this is kind of odd. I got that water pump off. Looks like the O-ring failed. Like, there's a little divot right here. I don't know if that's what did it, but uh, you can tell it's all moist around here. And this thing is soaking wet, so looks like it's been leaking a while. But uh, when you can tell back here, it's all wet. Oh, look at that! Look at that! So it wasn't coming out of the weep hole; it's coming out of the freeze plug. Oh, actually, it looks like it corroded through right there around the freeze plug. Well, that's better news. At least we got something more definitive, you know, because it's kind of just a bunch of little issues, and none of them have seemed to fix it yet. But uh. I'd say that's the fucking issue there. So uh, that little 10 mil came in handy, came right off with a half inch. Um, and the hold, so I, when my buddy was over here the other night, we were, trying, we were putting tension on the uh, tensioner, trying to get the belt to hold that pulley, so I get those bolts off. Um, I used, oh, I guess I lost it. Oh, nope. I don't know, I put a pry bar, a little bit smaller one than this, through the hole, and it grabbed, and you can see where it's all scratched up. Right there to wedge it on there so I can keep this from spinning while I was trying to get these bolts out. So, anyway, a little trick there. But, uh, yeah, I was looking at the weak pole. Man, it doesn't look like it's leaking there. I didn't even notice the freeze plug. Look at that. Anyway, back to work. See y'all. More 6 liter shenanigans. Test drive went well. Stayed nice and cool. This thing actually runs and drives really well. Uh, sounds like it's got bad cat bushings like they always do. So, uh, you know, so I drove back to the house. A little low on coolant, so they all top it off, and then I was like, man, it looks moist down here. And sure enough, I don't know if you can be able to see, that hose is leaking. Um, it, from what I can tell, it's a Ford-only part, so... Um, so that loops all the way around, back to 
to the heater core. So I'm just going to try to uh, drain the coolant, fresh coolant back in the jug and try to cap these two heater hoses off. And uh, I have to get a little creative. Um, if I have to, I think I have enough heater hose to run from there somewhere, you know, out of the way to the other side. And uh, if I can't find a way to cap it. So wish me luck. See y'all. All right, got the six liter out of here. It's trying to beat the rain. I barely beat it. It just left and it just started raining. So what I ended up doing is just taking the uh, the hose off where that Y is underneath the degas bottle, the D bag bottle, and uh, I had just enough hose to loop it around, kind of along the firewall above the turbo and all that shit, um, over to right behind the uh, uh, the heater control valve. And so I looped it around that way, and then I, I uh, <laughs> somebody's getting it. And then I plugged the uh, uh, heater, the lines going to the heater core, so that's what I did there. Oh, there's Sean and the CTSV. So that thing's good. No leaks. Didn't get hot. All done. Need to find that hose from uh, Motorcraft and order it. <laughs> See y'all.